Look at the transfer portal. Uh, the biggest name that we talked about was San Diego State transfer offensive tackle Joshua Simmons, uh, who mm -hmm. Florida was very interested in getting on campus. Uh, did not even make it until today uh, to get him on the campus where he decides on Saturday to go to Ohio State to play. Uh, an unfortunate uh, situation because Florida obviously desperately needs help. Uh, on the offensive line, but the Gators do lose out on Joshua Simmons, a transfer from San Diego State. Would have been a good one. Uh, had several years to play. Started as a sophomore out there at San Diego State for like 13 games. Had some issues with penalties, but we got to act. We got to be a little bit. I know Nick can get in his bag. Nick got the people going a little bit with our approach. Uh, I, I want to see the entire uh, – I got some takes as well. and, and mm -hmm. I want to see the entire – how everything – uh, closes out the offensive line is a is a spot. Now I have to survey the land and see what our options are. But that was a big piece I thought we could have brought in to solidify some depth that we missed out on. I don't know if we're dragging our feet. We had a visit set up. Uh, so there and I've heard that name. I think I threw Josh Simmons' name into the group chat when when Mazuka entered the portal. I threw that to you guys. Hey, this is a guy that they're out there as well. So watch out for this name. So I know they've been uh, actively working um uh, but he had his visit set up after ohio state ends up committing there uh i do think we need to get a little bit more aggressive with getting some offensive line depth yeah just looking at just looking at how spring went like guys dropping like mm -hmm. flies um austin barber was dinged up all spring um just mm -hmm. toughed it out and played through it uh it's just a position where you're gonna get rolled up on the running backs gonna get tackled or pushed into the into your into the back of your leg and 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 hundreds of pounds are going to fall on you uh with a lot of force like you can get a, a sprained ankle break a foot you know something can happen that can uh take you out quickly and um florida needs depth and and watching the spring game uh florida's defensive line which i think is going to be good looked like 2008 alabama uh because of snaps and, and things and you love to hear because florida because <laughs> because florida's offensive line wasn't playing well uh there was a there was a comma and to that. Dan. Oh, okay. A but to that. Um, I I think Florida's strategy of not wanting. I think it's a, a there's a couple folds to this. One, um, Dan CEO uh, owner uh, head of the board went wild last last spring, like right. went wild. And anyone that Florida was interested in, Life Wallet was throwing money at them. Um, Again, going back to the lack of focus of the leadership <laughs> of the fiduciary leader of my investment. Oh, man, I frivolous with your money, man. It, I'm telling you what, there might <laughs> be some class action stuff happening. Here. Gotta be. I'm not man. saying I'm not putting that out there. You can't clip this and say I'm encouraging it. I'm just saying, you know, as a medical company, us investing <laughs> in Miami players hasn't seemed to turn out well for our bottom line revenue. Our, <laughs> our bottom line revenue as a shareholder. Hour. Hmm. I kind of wish I would have bought some stock now. Opportunity not still too late. No, 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 Never no, 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 I'm not in a position to be frivolously playing with my money, man. <laughs> <laughs> For um, only 63 copper pennies, you too can be a shareholder. That's right. 63 copper pennies. What a great name it, for the show it, today. Yeah, that is a good name. But I don't think it would hit now. The troll, I should have got in when the troll, mm -hmm. the troll was valuable when Dan bought in. Yeah. If I buy in now, the troll don't hit. I, and listen, it wasn't a troll. Dan full heartedly believed in the company he was investing in. There's no way. Dan's a smart I bought, guy. It, I, bought it, I bought into an idea, Silk. Yeah. Yeah. I'm an idea guy like you. This is, the, you know, yeah, yeah. this is the American dream, Silk. This is Dan's <laughs> just trying to live the American dream. And and uh it, it would seem that uh sheep's wool has been pulled over his eyes. And, and right, he, used wear, he used to wear fine, fine wools and linens. Uh and Nick, and now Nick. he's in Gildan. Yeah, we got this. Is this where we check like his uh, dedication to the company? Uh, Dan, show us the Life Wallet app on your phone right now. I uh, I don't I don't have it. <laughs> um, I have a, I have a company, bro. I have a similar product on my phone. It's called Apple Health. It comes standard <laughs> on an iPhone. It does just come with the iPhone. You're right. Um, <laughs> back on track. Uh, this train has derailed quicker than uh, Life Wallet stock post <laughs> launching. Um, so back on track, I think Florida uh, last year was unprecedented. I had writers from all over the place asking like, yo, what the hell is going on? I'm like, dude, this is the wild west. The NCAA is not policing anything. 
and Florida and Miami are just swinging around and, and Florida's losing out on battles because Miami's just going to pay more. Um, right. And good for those kids. Honestly, good for those great kids. For those You're kids. making money. Uh, great for you. I think, I think any student athlete should be able to make money. Um, Florida was losing those battles. So part of the reason why they didn't want their strategy, their plan out was because it did not work well last year. And you have no idea what mm-hmm. other schools are going to do. The other part of the reason is Florida didn't want to lose other guys on their roster. Right. Um, with That's the transfer true. portal, you can pick up and leave. Mm-hmm. If, if you don't like the way the things are going, you can pick up your ball. Hit which, the clo- which closed <laughs> yesterday, by the way, right? It closed yesterday. So you yeah. cannot enter your name into the portal. If, if, if I, Nick Del Torre, uh, Florida punter, looked at the roster and said, ah, I'm just not getting past Jeremy Crawshaw. I only have one more year to play. And I walked my little – my little legs down to compliance today. They'd say, "Sorry, buddy, uh, that's closed." Uh, enjoy carrying, out. enjoy carrying Jeremy Crawshaw's uh, boomerang to practice. Um, <laughs> and blooming on so, you. He yeah. has a boomerang for real. Uh, it's in Australia. I have a boomerang. Yeah, it's just an Australian thing. I think Nick would carry I have a boomerang, boomerang from Australia. Yeah, it's just racist. Um, right? So, so that's part. That's part <laughs> of it. Um, that that's part of it. And, and to me. Ah, you have a six and seven roster. Maybe some of the guys need to walk. Um, so I don't think Florida, in my opinion, I don't think Florida was competing the way that they should have and not wanting to bring guys onto campus because uh, you didn't want to have guys on your roster start counting and being like, wait, wait, wait why are they bringing in two safeties? I play safety. Right. Um, maybe I need to get out of here. Trying to protect your roster by not having guys come on till April Josh Simmons was able to go and visit Oklahoma, go to visit Ohio State. And, and we don't know. Maybe there's NIL numbers that Florida didn't agree with. Um, but Josh Simmons is a guy who, if not a starter, would have been in a rotation and would have played for you this year. And, and your decision not to have guys on campus until May led you to lose someone. Now, listen, right. I, I, I don't run the program. I'm not betting my job on this strategy. Florida's coaching staff is betting their job on the strategies they're making with every day with day to day decisions because all these day to day decisions add up to wins and losses. Mm-hmm. And you have more losses than wins, or not enough wins. Even if you have, I mean, Ron Zook got ran out of town and he won eight games a year. Um, they're betting this strategy. They're betting their jobs on it. So, who am I to tell them that they're wrong? Uh, just a guy who writes essays on the internet, man. Well, yeah, they got to protect their roster. Um, just like the safety we just brought on. And, you know, it's just a lot of smoke about Kamari Wilson. If you go check Florida State of Miami message boards, they all think they're getting Kamari Wilson. And you see we brought our safety on. Uh, today it was announced that he's right. coming to visit. So you got to protect your roster because at that time, when, you, when you're when uh, you even with smoke and rumors and a lot of that stuff being out there, you're risking your players that you you're quite, that, that you're counting on to be in the too deep entering the same market because you don't know who tampering with them because they're being tampered. Your roster is being tampered with as well. So there is some strategy to this. It's, it's some chess that's going on. Uh, Josh Simmons set up his visits before. Uh, I mean, he's at Ohio State. The last day the portals open, so it looks like they had some strategy for it as well. You know. Uh, mm-hmm. Ohio State's a hotter program. I can get why they beat us on the trail for certain things. I don't know the NIL numbers or any of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't get to get them on campus, but I'm just in the middle ground with the strategy of it. Um, while that, that's a big need, uh, we also could have linemen. We had two offensive linemen that hit the portal that none of us expected, you know, uh, mm-hmm. especially with uh, Ethan White, who we all thought was a diehard Gator. I didn't foresee him entering the portal and leaving uh, what he had built here at University of Florida and changing his trajectory around as a recruit, you know, and, and losing weight and doing some things. And now he's not even on the roster at USC West. So it's just, it's all fragile right now. Mm-hmm. Um, now that made the portals closed, everybody can get aggressive, set up visits. Interested to see if we can find some more bodies outside of Josh Simmons who would have been in our too deep, like Nick said. So it is a blow to uh, our offseason off season acquisitions, but they got to be smart with it because if you get too aggressive in that portal, your own <clears throat> Ross can say, yo, these guys don't value us. They don't think we're that good. I can take my talent down to UCF who's offering me the same mm-hmm. amount of NIL bucks and I ain't got to compete with whoever they're going to bring in on, on this uh, this uh, transfer portal. Wait. <laughs> so it's, it's a little bit of, uh, you know, rhyme to reason with how you got to move and we're all seeing how it all plays out. 
That's just safety is a premium position right now. So safety safety portal recruiting is about to get real crazy because uh, there's a lot of teams that need a lot of safety help. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, um, go ahead. Um, and and I think I, I think if you can get RJ Moten to commit this week, um, yeah. You, let's you, let's. I, th- run. I think I think Florida will push for him. He got to campus on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, flew down. Dad played at Florida. Um, oh. Oh. Yeah, so there's some legacy there, uh, but was born in New Jersey, played football there in New Jersey. Actually, was a very, very good baseball player in high school as well. Um, then went to uh, Michigan, uh, got passed up on, on the depth chart. And um, to me, I think he's kind of like what Florida has. I think he's a little bit in between linebacker safety, like big linebacker, mm-hmm. small safety. He's a guy who comes down, plays in the box, can thug. Vice versa. Um, big safety, but- small linebacker. Yes, sorry. Uh, flip that lightning, reverse it. Um, but I, I think he's kind of what Florida has in terms of talent, but a guy who has a ton of experience. And Florida mm. has none of that in that room. Yep. Um, and whether he comes in and is a starter, he's a guy who has is a veteran, has played in over 25 games, um, mm-hmm. had a handful of starts, more than a handful of starts. Um, and, and when you're looking at that room – I mean, I just did a too deep depth chart. Uh, we can run through that at the end of the show if you guys want yep. to. Um, the depth chart there is sophomore, sophomore starting, and then true freshman or yep. Jadarius Perkins, who um, is not a safety, could be a safety, is a star, is a corner. Like, you just don't have depth and experience in that room. Uh, and yeah. In- in- I know we've mentioned the name a few times. RJ Moten is who we're talking about. He played a little bit at, at cornerback, also played safety as a bit of a tweener, six foot, 223 pounds, has two years to play two, uh, appeared in all 14 games last season, played defensive back in 13 of those games with 10 starts at safety, uh, recorded 31 tackles, two and a half sacks, our tackles for loss, one and a half sacks, one interception, two bat press break, break ups, and two quarterback hurries, 65 total tackles, 17 assisted tackles um, uh, out of that uh, that group. So he visits yesterday until today, yesterday being Sunday until today, or through today and into tomorrow uh, as well. That is a guy that Florida is going to go after. Just looking at the on three uh, transfer portal, he is ranked as the third best uh, safety right now. Uh, Jalen Key from UAB uh, is a, in the uh, the transfer uh, portal as well. Rhode Island safety uh, Antonio Carter is in the transfer portal. Both look to uh, the on three prediction machine has them uh, both to Ole Miss right now. Don't know if that's going to be the case. Uh, Jackson Turner from Arizona and Trajan Williams from Oregon uh, round out the top five safeties that are available on the market right now. Uh, Anthony Duke. Wilson from Georgia State, mm-hmm. uh, Robert uh, Ramey from Liberty, and Anthony Rose from South Carolina, and Michael Doherty from LSU, and Jamarian Burt from Ocala, Florida, uh, transfer from Oklahoma, are the top 10 uh, right now at the safety position. I uh, do like my safety room right now, but we've all been on record saying we want some veteran help, uh, somebody with some experience. So uh, he he would come in with some experience, but uh, I, I'm uh, very high on Miguel Mitchell. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kamari Wilson is a five-star coming in, so there's a lot of potential there. Uh, but I would like some, you know, solidify somebody with some reps back there. He's coming from the Big Ten, great experience out there. Um, so, you know, our young boys, you know, we may have to not have to rely on, rely on them so heavily this year. Uh, and if he's not what, what we think he could be in the transfer portal, you know, we'll see what our young boys could do. Cause I think we got some guys there, but um, especially with Bryce Thornton as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Castell came in. Uh, I think very highly of these guys. I heard they've been doing some good things, uh, spring football and also off season already. So uh, I think so, this defense is going to be what we rely on this year, man. I feel very good. I'm bullish on the defense, very high. Uh, I think it's going to be our strongest side of the ball. Uh, and I think it's going to be one of the best in the SEC. I'm going to go ahead and, and step out on that limb. Uh, I think my, my duo at cornerback is going to be very good. Uh, my linebacker down the middle, my defensive mm-hmm. tackles. You want to be good down the middle as a defense, or you're going to be just just rice pudding and getting pushed around the field. So we got solidified down the middle. Uh, and safety position would just be the final piece of that, man. We should have a good defense. 
Yep. Uh, speaking of defense, uh, Oregon transfer Anthony Jones uh, listed as 6'3", 235-pound linebacker, originally a three-star out of high school out of Las Vegas, uh, is also – uh, going to be coming on to campus. Nick, has that been announced when? Is he on campus now? Uh, no. Uh, okay. On campus right now is only R.J. Moon. Okay, so R.J. What's Moon his name? Is- Anthony Jones? Yes, Anthony Jones from Oregon. He is a 19-year-old redshirt freshman, uh, so that means he did not play. Uh, last season was a uh, the 576th overall player in the class of 2022. Other names that Nick... And uh, the Gators um, writing staff put together is number one player overall in the transfer portals, Zachary Franklin, uh, wide receiver out of UT San Antonio, was a first team all conference USA selection, 94 catches, 1136 yards, 15 touchdowns uh his collegiate uh, collegiate totals pardon me are 262 receptions for 3348 yards and 37 touchdowns um has not scheduled a visit yet uh but certainly with the loss of xavier henderson could be a huge get for the florida gators who that receiver i'm sorry zakari franklin from utsa ranked as the number one player in the transfer portal right now he's visiting not um, yet. Florida would oh. love that. Florida uh, would love that. Florida me too. Love that. <laughs> um, just again, listen. I get, I get where he played, um, but just a guy who produces, and, and we say it all the time on this show. You know, when we're talking about recruits, like you just got to perform the way you need to against the people you're playing against. And he was at UTSA, um, but just an unbelievable career. He had 94 catches for 1136 yards and 15 mm-hmm. touchdowns last year. Um, 262 receptions for 3,348 yards and 37 touchdowns in his career. Mm-hmm. I you know I, I thought and wrote and said on, on our show that Florida needed another outside receiver before Xavier Henderson uh, hit the portal. Uh, that, that need and want uh, is just ramped up now. Um, if you can get someone this proven, um, Florida Florida needs to do whatever they can to, to get him on campus, uh, 6'1", 180, uh, really good pass catcher. Yeah, Keon Coleman, another guy. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was, was going to say- talk about Xavier Henson, but we can talk about that a little later. <clears throat> um, just, I'll just run through wider series. We won't change topics. Uh, Keon Coleman uh, from Michigan State uh, also announced that he would be transferring. Uh, Keon Coleman has – he had – <clears throat> Pardon me, 58 catches, 798 yards, seven touchdowns, 13 point yard, or 13.8 yards per catch uh, last season. Also played basketball at Michigan State, did not play last year, uh, but uh, obviously an athletic guy. On three has him ranked as the number three wide receiver. Jordan Hudson from TCU is ranked as the number two. Caleb Brown from Ohio State, a four-star guy uh, out of high school. He's a sophomore. Uh, he's in the portal. Lorenzo Styles from North Dakota. Cody Epps. From BYU, Gary Bryant Jr. from USC, uh, Xavier Henderson there, Milton Wright from Purdue, and then Caleb Burton from Ohio State round out the top 10 there. So go on about Xavier Henderson. Oh, no, just uh, we didn't speak about the loss of him. It happened at the last week's show. Uh, I've been very vocal about the wide receiver room. So have Nick uh, as far as an outside receiver. Uh, my take was just the young guys, man. I know we had a scrimmage right before the spring game where Xavier Henderson scored three touchdowns. Uh, I'm just of belief, man, with, with, with average quarterback play, which I think we're going to get. Uh, if we don't add a guy here, you're just going to need receivers that could separate, uh, not big body guys that are going to win jump up balls or, or or really good throws and be able to make catches. You need guys to be able to make uh, create some space. And that's going to take route running or either speed, explosiveness, and that's that's the young boys that we brought in. Uh, of course, Xavier Henderson had a, a leap on the playbook and just how to uh, how to operate as a uh, a veteran receiver in a college football format and and, and, and environment. And these young boys didn't have that type of uh, luxury. So I think one spring they got some spring ball in. Uh, they'll get some early camp. I don't expect them to be full fledged ready, but like by game two, three. When you're starting to get warmed up, I think these boys are going to be ready to play. Uh, Andy Jean uh, is going to be able to separate he, the way he set up his routes. Uh, Aiden Mazel is very fast and explosive. 
he drew two pass interference calls in the spring game. You can see the, the problems, and, and he's going to have some some defense coordinators stay up, stay up late at night during his career just because mm-hmm. of how fast he is. Uh, we just need that at receiver. University of Florida always had receivers that could separate. Uh, when the old ball coach called a play, he's a good play caller, but Redell Anthony was definitely blown by people. Absolutely. Um, another name that uh, will still come onto campus is Eugene Wilson out of Gaither High School uh, at wide receiver uh, right. as well to add to that to that list. Um, I want to take a quick pause on transfer portal talk. Did you guys see during the NFL draft, I mentioned, uh, meant to bring this up, uh, that they mentioned how complex Florida's offense was and that wasn't exactly uh, the easiest offense to, to learn or that it wasn't, uh, you know, as simple as it looked. Did you guys have any thoughts on that uh, before we pick up some more transfer portal talk? Just more what I, I've, I've been saying and thinking. I mean, it's all – I'm not 100% happy with the uh, – the, the I, I would say the route combinations and, and some of that we're setting up. We could get a little bit more complex. And I expect the offense to grow in year two. It would have been crazy to see what it would have been on the, with AR, that type of talent, in the year two, uh, him getting more command of the offense. But you're not selling – and that, that, that's been my point of even in the recruiting process. You're bringing in very smart guys that have very smart people around them when it pertains to quarterback. These guys are dealing with some of the top quarterback coaches in, in the world right now because, the, I mean, once you're out of America, you're not getting better quality, uh, quarterback coaches. You know what I'm saying? So you're dealing with the best coaches of, in the world with some of these young prospects that we're recruiting. For him to be able to land these dudes that are coming in with their parents and their quarterback coaches, and they're getting on the whiteboard. They're drawing out plays. They're going through X's and O's, development stuff, quarterback stuff, and they're they're able to land elite kids. They're selling something. Like There's some offense that they're delivering they're talking about that that's that's registering to these young athletes and also to the the minds that are around these young boys. They're not sending them to the University of Florida to blow their career away. Um, They like something they're seeing, what Billy's delivering and teaching. So um, just get off in some time. I think it's a little bit more complex than what people think. It's too many nerds around for it to be simple. <laughs> too many nerds. I, I think it is. Um, like Dan Mullen's offense, despite the um, despite the motions and, and stuff like that, is very quarterback friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of what teams saw with Anthony Richardson was, hey, the, there's a lot on the quarterback to read and diagnose at the line of scrimmage. Um, and get in and out of plays. In so many weeks, we'd ask Montreal Johnson, hey, th- this run that you had, this 60-yard run, or, hey, this touchdown, he'd be like, oh, that was actually it was actually a pass play, and Anthony checked it at the line. Um, there's a lot that goes on that, that we don't know, that even someone like me uh, who covers the team and gets paid to do that um, as a writer doesn't know. So that's, I think, um, just some of the stuff that maybe – you you watch when you're watching and I'm watching. I'm not I'm not trying to point fingers. When even when I'm watching, we don't know what the play call is, what mm-hmm. the options off of that were. Um, so it, it's good to hear that you know uh, for as much for as much crap as Billy's gotten um, for his play calling and and game time decisions um, that maybe there's more uh, underneath the surface, like an iceberg, Dan. Like an iceberg. Uh, let's see. Back to the transfer portal talk. Austin or Alton McCaskill, pardon me, is another name uh, that has been mentioned to the University of Florida. Uh, Matt Zenitz said that Colorado could be a team to watch, but McCaskill was the 2021 uh, AAC Rookie of the Year. Coming from Houston as a junior, uh, ranked as the number one running back uh, in the transfer portal right now, if you look at the on three recruiting prediction machine, Florida is uh, listed as the team to beat right now uh, would be a little bit surprised. Seems like a, a position of luxury for the Gators. Obviously, if you can get a talented player, you know, Florida could lose a, a running back in Montreal Johnson, you know, to the draft next year. Uh, but certainly, you know, with the addition of, uh, you know, with the, with the uh, roster of, of Johnson, ETN, uh, Kim Carroll, um, you know, if Florida needs another running back, I just I don't know if I if I see that uh, right now, especially where Florida only has five uh, spots open. It might be a wait and see approach uh, at the running back position. But any thoughts on him? It makes uh, up for the, go ahead, go ahead. Nick. Oh, you got it. I, I think I think I think somewhere else would probably be Colorado. Seems like a, a good landing spot. Uh, they've got. 
Space. They got a lot of openings. They got, they got wide, openings. wide open spaces. They there. had 83 scholarship athletes in the 2022 season. 13 of those scholarship athletes remain at the University of Colorado. At Florida Gators uh, offensive line transfer David Connor announced that he would be going to Colorado. But uh, so go ahead. Yeah, I wouldn't mind making up for the Fletcher miss towards the end to Miami. We brought in one running back with Treyon Webb. This kid mm-hmm. is like a freshman, so he has three, four years to play, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I wouldn't mind him coming in in the, in the portal, and that way <clears throat> we can keep our two running backs for the 23 class and not have to go – 24 class, and not have to go try to find a scat back in that and, and solidifies the room a little bit. So no, I wouldn't McCaskill, be mad at it. McCaskill's a junior – how many years do you have to play? I thought you I, would I have have three years to play. You play no, he would have two years to play one. Mm, yeah, I'm not mm, not really excited about that take then. That's one we could we, we get, we get, we miss, right. we miss, but I don't really see the value in bringing him in one year. Yeah. He, I, I, I wrote this though. I hey, I, I didn't understand what you'd be selling to Cam Carroll. Um Cam Carroll picks Florida only has a year to play. Um, I love Montreal Johnson and Trevor Etienne. I thought ah, that's, that's a tough sell. Um, but if I'm going to be hard on Florida for their strategy, I'm not going to be hard on them. Hey, if you see a guy that can help you, and, and if you mm-hmm. think this guy can help you, he's one of the best players in the country at his position. Cool. Swing. Take well, a shot. And- and you get the opportunity to have him sit, you know, maybe he plays a little bit this year or if he were to come, but then next year you would have, you know, Carol gone, um, potentially Johnson gone, you know, Trey and Webb would be probably a red shirt freshman at that point in time. Uh, you know, he would have the opportunity to split carries with, uh, with ETN, uh, you know, maybe his senior year, don't know what he's looking for uh, out of a program, but uh, you know, with two years, you have a little bit of leeway there, uh, but that's also assuming that Montreal Johnson, which is again, no reason to believe that, that he would or wouldn't at this point uh, would potentially go uh, to the NFL uh, quickly looking at offensive line. Cause we know Florida needs help there. Cameron Johnson from Houston. Uh, Houston's had a lot of people enter the portal. Uh, Cameron Johnson, is the number one ranked uh, tackle, Deshaun Woods from Wyoming, uh, Caleb Johnson from Notre Dame, Lance Robinson also from Houston, uh, and then uh, Jaden Muskrat from Tulsa are the top five uh, tackles in the transfer portal. And then in interior offensive line, Troy Everett from Appalachian State, Ben Christman from Ohio State, Hunter Deo from Iowa State. He just looks like an offensive lineman there. Um Rashad Strother from ECU and then Vincent Lumia from Duquesne are the top five interior offensive linemen uh, in that group. So what was the uh, running back we were talking about again, real quick? We were just, <clears throat> we were just talking about a- a- Alton McCaskill. Yeah. In his, uh, in his letter, we, we, when he entered the transport, he said he had three years of eligibility left. Then maybe he sat out a year. I know he played, he was a, a freshman, AAC freshman of the year or all freshman team. Um, so I could be a, a little bit off. So he's got three years. So again, you know, kind of still plays into the same um, circumstances, you know, maybe isn't a guy that's going to play a lot this year, uh, but could have an opportunity of uh, right, yeah. next year. So uh, Florida has, I believe, in, unless they lose a, a, a player to a graduate transfer this off season, we'll have, I believe five open scholarship spots right now. Nick, is that right? Um, or maybe a little bit more. Those numbers are fluid, baby. You got uh, yeah. two kickers on scholarship right now, and I don't know that you need two kickers on scholarship. Um, I think Florida right now, if I had to put a number, they'd be between like 78 and 80. Okay. So somewhere between, you know, five and seven that the Gators have uh, the chance uh, right now, the only one that is on campus or has scheduled a visit that we know of is the safety linebacker tweener rj moton uh nick you got the uh, internet up in a frenzy so we'll talk a little bit about that but before we do let's give a quick shout out to our friends over at home field apparel go check them out homefieldapparel.com use promo code stadium and gale you get 15 percent off of your order they do have those new vintage almost starter looking jackets that will be released they're eligible for pre-order right now they'll be uh, shipped in i think six or seven weeks i'll uh, go check out homefieldapparel.com 
promo code Stadium and Gale, a lot of great Gator stuff on there and a lot of great stuff for colleges and universities all over the country, including one NFL team. That's the Indianapolis Colts. So go get yourself some vintage uh, Indianapolis Colts for uh, Anthony Richardson's career there. Uh, if anybody, I'm talking to you, Harrison Tenzer, the only Indianapolis Colts fan that I know personally. Uh, Nick, you got the internet up in a bit of a frenzy uh, with a tweet the other day that said some of the get- best players of the Gators roster are from the transfer portal. Montro Johnson, Ricky Pearsall, Micah Mazuka, Cam Jackson, UF staff has shown that they were going to recruit the portal and they know it's important. Just don't understand the current strategy for this second window. Want to opine anymore? I know you kind of touched on it. Yeah. Um, I, I it's I, I'm out. I, I think some people, if if they have their their opinion, um, I put out um, that I didn't agree with the way Florida was handling this transfer portal window. Um, I thought and still think there are glaring holes on the roster that need to be filled. Um, I don't think that there's a ton of premium premium talent in the available in the transfer portal uh, and everyone in the transfer portal is going to have some kind of wart or warts um there's not a perfect player like caleb williams is not in the transfer portal um but i think the way that florida was handling it to me looked like they were scared and i kind of touched on that before they were scared of competing with other people that okay well now they know that florida's in on it and um does the CEO of a uh, NASDAQ traded company start throwing around Dan's money for, for now, for now. <laughs> NASDAQ start throwing around Dan's right investment now. at NAL, at NAL dollars. Um, and they were afraid, scared that guys on their roster were going to leave. And to me, it's, it's, I, I, I get it. I get the reasons why people inside the building have told me they're operating the way they're operating. I just don't agree with it. And, and like I said, or it's not my job on the line. So that's that's fine. If that's the way you're operating and it works out, if you want to be like Lil Wayne and, and real G's move in silence like lasagna, cool. But that lasagna better be fire when it hits the plate. And, and I don't know that it's going to be. I, I want to ask an open-ended question here. We've seen Florida maybe not handle this transfer portal super well. Um, you take out some of those Louisiana transfers, your Johnsons, your Torrance, uh, your Cam Waits. You know, Florida hasn't won a ton uh, on the transfer portal. Certainly Cam Jackson, Ricky Pierce are names uh, that you can look at and say that there's been some success there. Uh, but you mix in this transfer portal with um, the orange and blue debut being on Thursdays. Do you guys think that Florida's playing – maybe a little scared or a little afraid of competition. Maybe it's we don't want to announce who's gotten offers or who's going to be visiting in fear of somebody transferring or somebody being looked at by a different school. Are we having the orange and blue debut on Thursday? So we're not competing against a, you know, a Georgia or an Alabama or, you know, even a Florida state or Miami for those visits. What do you guys think about that? It's all strategy. You gotta, you gotta be aware of well, just life business wherever you are you got to be aware of who you are on on the chessboard you know and you're playing the, the entire board and not the pieces so um i'm not entirely mad at any of the offer i don't know what they, they're, they're working with they got to know the landscape of how their mm-hmm. recruits getting their roster getting uh recruited they got to know some tampering's going on and also the nil world uh you got to know be aware of where you at with negotiating that type of stuff and if things go public do you have like our best route is probably keeping things quiet. Like us as fans, we get caught up in our ego and want like, Hey man, just make these offers public. I don't know how much that affects like the yeah. offers going public, how much that affects these kids decisions. They're not 18 or 17. These are grown men that have been through the, the process a little bit. So um, I don't know, bro. It's just like, to me, I'm just watching it all play out. Everything's fairly new. Um, I don't know if the offer is going public. I, I I know for sure they're not waiting on these kids to enter the portal before they talk. And allegedly, well, apparently, yeah, apparently. Uh, like I said, I threw the name John Simmons into the chat uh, a couple months ago when Matt Mazuka entered the portal, uh, threatened to enter the portal. I mentioned him in our group chat. So they're they're scouting the the and surveying the land for sure. Um, but how their public offers go out, how they setting up visits, it's all strategy, and you got to play a little chess, man. Uh, a couple other names that uh, were of interest to the Florida Gators fan base. 
Uh, one of them was quarterback transfer Colin Thompson from Nebraska. Um, lost his opportunity. I know that he was injured, lost his uh, opportunity to uh, Jeff Sims uh, under new uh, head coach Matt Rule, who is uh, leading Nebraska right now. Uh, Brady Allen from Purdue, Peyton Thorne from Michigan State, uh, Ben Bryant from Cincinnati um, are, are names that were somewhat connected or of interest to the Gator fan base. Um, any of those names excite you? No, yeah. Nick is on a, a, a audio platform for those listening on podcasts <laughs> uh, no. and just shook his head. So okay. we're, we're live on YouTube. You should we are. follow. You should follow Stadium Miguel on YouTube. It's a great if Monday you're watching, morning activity. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit that little notification bell. We go live every Monday. The visual um, slept different. If you're on audio platform, definitely. Even if you're on audio platform, you don't have YouTube. Go make a YouTube account and show your favorite podcast some love and subscribe. How about that? How much does it cost? Here. Hmm? How much does it cost to subscribe to the YouTube channel? Oh, it don't cost nothing to show love unless oh, you're a okay. hater. If you're a hater, it just costs you know some of your you know some, some anger and upsetting your day <laughs> to show some love. But for us normal people, it don't cost nothing to show love. Love is free, baby. Hit the subscribe. YouTube YouTube don't charge you zero dollars. So none of those names excite uh, any of you guys. Uh, Brady Allen, Peyton Thorne, Casey Thompson, Ben Bryant. No, nah, they sound like Murder Mertz, you know. Yep. Yeah. Shout out to even Buckner. Uh, I know uh, Buckner entered the, the quarterback from Notre Dame. Uh, he yep. entered the transfer portal and immediately uh, heads over to Bama and Reese, the offensive coordinator that's over there right now. Uh, looking at his numbers, I'm like, bro, this is this is Murder Mertz numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. So. It's just not 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 the big names or that we would hope for to enter the transfer portal uh, at this point. I mean, if you got a graduate assistant that comes on come on over the summer, then that's an option. But right now, I'm cool with everything that's in the portal. Just vibe out. Casey Thompson's not going to do it for me. I had a friend um, uh, when we were talking about Casey um, say Florida has a bunch of guys in that room. That are going to go pro in something other than sports. Why do you need to add another one? And I was like, mm. okay, all right. So maybe maybe hold off on writing that story. All right. Let's see. I think that that gets us through transfer portal talk. Obviously, you're going to see a lot of names pop up over the next few weeks. Um, but that's kind of where we sit right now. The transfer portal entering window is closed. Uh, the opportunity for these players to come and transfer to any school is now open. Uh, and then certainly uh, there will be players that enter the transfer portal that may not find homes either. So uh, let's.